What is up YouTube? In this video, I'm going to teach you how to draw for a cover-up. Now this could be a super tricky thing when you first get started, so I'm going to show you and break down how I go about doing it. And if you're new to this channel, I'm Brandon from Tattooing 101, and make sure you like and subscribe down below to keep up to date on the content that we make each week. Okay, so this is how I draw and get ideas for cover-ups. Obviously, cover-ups can be super tricky when you are first getting into them just because there's a lot going on. It can be really hard to come up with ideas and have the tattoo cover correctly because you only get one shot. If you accidentally mess up a cover-up, at that point, they pretty much need laser to go back in and fix it. So I highly recommend if you are first starting out, don't try to do a cover-up. It's going to be really hard for you to do. And more than likely, you're going to end up doing things not how you wanted them to. Um, and it's just gonna mess up the tattoo and they're gonna have to go get it removed a little bit Go through a couple sessions to get it covered up again So stay away from cover-ups when you are first learning, but when you get to this point This is how I draw for cover-ups So there's a couple things that are involved whenever you are drawing for a cover-up Obviously you want to get a picture of the tattoo that they get back in the day We would use tracing paper go over the actual tattoo and then just draw over top of it. Nowadays we have awesome technology like the iPad that you should definitely use because it is available. iPads make everything easier for you and you can pretty much take a picture, draw over top of it within you know, hundreds of layers to get the idea that you want and then print it off to size. But it all depends on the design that you are covering up. I found this on Google, it's obviously a funny one so I figured I'd use this one. Um, because this one can be tricky as well just because there's a lot of really saturated lines obviously the cross out marks so this could be a tricky cover-up um, a couple rules of thumb when it comes to cover-ups is anytime you are doing a design more than likely it's going to be two or three times the size of the original tattoo so obviously this is on the upper part of the arm this cover-up is going to take up this full section of this arm to cover up correctly and hide all of these things going on Another rule of thumb would be anything that was living or is living works great for a cover-up. What I mean by that is flowers, sunflowers work out great because they have a really dark inside. Um, any kind of birds, it's really nice to hide feathers, um, hide the cover-up with feathers, things like that. Also fur, so bears, wolves, things that are pretty dark um, work great for cover-ups because all the textures that you're using in feathers or fur help hide all of these things. I definitely wouldn't recommend trying to do a uh, portrait or anything super realistic as a cover-up because it's just going to be super, super hard. So I like to stick with neo-traditional. You could do a lot with it, add some bold colors in there, and be able to cover it up efficiently. Another thing is any cover-ups obviously going to have to be dark, especially with lines like this, unless they go get a couple sessions of tattoo removing, get it lasered off, and then go back into it, uh, more than likely it's going to have to be darker. So now that we've went over those things, we could get into how to draw for a cover-up. So I have a couple things ready for you to show you exactly how I would go about doing this. Obviously I talked about feathers, owls, crows, other birds. Crows work out great because they're so dark to begin with, but you just have to line them up perfectly. So I'll pull up a crow. Any time I'm drawing for a cover-up and I'm using animals or flowers, I'm always going to pick a real animal. I'm not going to use like a tattoo or even just try to draw it out of my head. I pull up a reference picture that's going to help me get all the dimensions perfect and how to size everything up. So then I could take down the opacity with this design and be able to see the actual cover up. So you could see right here that this is going to take up a very big area on the arm but it's going to cover up everything perfectly. Obviously I won't put the stick in there that's just part of the picture but I really like the stance of this crow and how it's set up and the lighting too so you could see I have it sized up perfectly that all of the dark areas are going to be where all of these names are but also all the light areas right here and where all the light sources are to make it look really good especially right here the perfect break in between these two are where it's going to be super light so you could hide all of these names in the dark areas but also have all the light sources in there that's really important another thing is the head's going to be a big deal so i'm making sure that none of the important areas like the beak the eye are taken back by any of the names in here i don't want any of the names being up in this really important area because with cover-ups you want to hide where everything is you want to take the 
focus away from where the cover up area is. So I'm gonna focus a ton on this actual face, the beak, the eye, and have that really powerful. So all of your focus goes to that instead of the dark areas where it would be the cover up. Another thing is the texture of the feathers are gonna be great with this. So you could go in, create some light sources in between these letters right here. So all the open areas you could get in and have some light sources, but all the dark areas you could get in really nicely with your heavy black to cover that up perfectly. So crows work out great. I love to use them for cover-ups. Um, obviously, sometimes you're not going to be lucky and be able to do a crow just because you know it's on a female and they don't like crows or it's a little bit dark for them. Things like that is one thing you want to think about. So you want to communicate with your client just because it is going on them for the rest of their life. They did get a bad tattoo to start out with, but you still want them to be happy with it when they walk out of the door. Okay, so the next thing, let's say you're getting a small cover up, you know, you had a small cover up coming in the door, so we're focusing on just one of these. Obviously, this cover up could be anything an infinity sign, a name, a little tattoo, anything really. Um, and obviously, it's going to be a lot easier because it's way, way smaller. So, what I like to do is use flowers. Flowers work out great for cover ups as well. Depending on the flower, you'll have to do a couple tricks in order to cover up efficiently. First thing would be a sunflower. If the tattoo is small enough, you will be able to cover up that tattoo very easily with a sunflower. So let's say the tattoo was really small, you know, small tattoo and they want to do something pretty, you know, they didn't like the way it looked. You could use this sunflower, put it right over top of it, and in the dark area of the sunflower, you could do all your little circles and shade them in really nicely covers up perfectly. I've done sunflowers quite a few times in my career um, and you could put a lot of them together, add in different flowers to it to make it into a completely different piece and make it into a sleeve and cover up that without any issue at all. Adding more flowers also help with taking your eye away from that really dark area that was the cover up. So biggest thing with cover ups is you want to go dark enough that it's covering it up but not overly dark to where it's absolutely noticeable that you are covering something up. So another trick with that would be using a regular flower, but using leaves as the cover up. I do this quite a bit as well. So with this, what I would do is have the tattoo, print it off and put it on the actual client with the stencil. And then I'll go in with my pens or my Sharpies, things like that, and go draw in the rest of it. I wouldn't actually draw this on the stencil part because I want it to flow really nice with the body and go with everything. So after it would be on their actual skin, I'd go in, add some leaves to it, you know, go with the flow of their body if it's on the arm, you know, sticking with like your S shapes and then going, creating leaves in different areas or adding more flowers to it as well will help a ton, just like we talked about with the sunflower, adding some different flowers, some bigger, smaller ones with that to create a big piece um, will definitely help out with the cover up. But this is exactly how I set up my cover ups. Obviously, there's a ton that goes into doing any sort of cover up and a lot more rules that go into it. This is just a quick video for someone that's just wanting to jump into doing small starter out cover ups. This is exactly how it is done. And I'm sure I'll make more in-depth videos in the future. But as always, thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you on the next video.